you just really don't want to beat on it. So you can buy a custom type knife from a good USA knife maker around a hundred bucks that's gonna last longer than you do buddy you gonna croak over and die way before this thing quits I mean this thing is right look at those liners everything's fitted up just right on this knife and this is before I I mean I I wasn't even talking to him on YouTube then and I got this knife and it's exactly everything he said it was gonna be He's going to tell you the truth on it. You know, if, if he makes a mistake on your knife or anything, he's going to tell you. I guarantee you it'll be fixed. And when it gets to you, you couldn't ask for a better doggone knife for the money. I mean, it just ain't out there. Best knife for, for the money in the world is a Mora. And most people know that. But best knife that's not going to let you down, that's bulletproof, that you can bet your life on and go out there and beat the hell out of for the money, I would say. And, and this guy's not very, very well known in the knife community yet. This is one of those little jewels, guys, guys you better get on. Um... Uh, before he gets too busy to make anything else. You know, you got your Bob Dozers, you got your Abelices, you got your uh, Sandy, which is getting real busy, your Jack Lores, and this guy is going to be right up there with them very quick. So, I'm going to tell you, uh, Dirty Room Knives makes some great knives. That's another guy you better be jumping on right now because this is going to stop soon. So, jump on it. Remember, you heard it right here, the Moody Bobby one. This this knife maker is going to be one that's out there, okay? Now, the second knife I ordered from him is not one I asked him to make especially for me. And that, this is the prettiest sheath out of any knife I've got. Boy, look at that leather work. WC down at the bottom. Now, this, it's got the dangler, which... All y'all know I prefer. This is a kind of a wood lower clone, kind of. It's got that drop back, which reminds me of a Spiderco bushcraft, which I don't know, I may be getting with William and telling him instead of this type of back where it humps up, I think I prefer for it to slope off a little bit. I like this diameter. Maybe just a little, just a smidgen thinner, you know, through the hand. I mean, it, just a little. Not this small, but, you know, I, I ain't going to be picky and I ain't going to hound him to death. But regardless, I, I think, I'll tell you what, William, if you listen, yeah, I want that. I want that to drop off like that. Look at that. No liners in that, and that fit and finish on this thing is perfect. I mean, perfect. There's no gaps. There's no, I mean, everything all the way around. And when he says that it's not a wall hanger, what he means by that is his blade edges is not to pristine perfection. Well, hell, if it was per to pristine perfection you'd be paying three times the amount for this blade but it's uh, how do I say it without it's usable perfection how about that you don't need it to be any better it ain't got to be beautiful to work hard it's got exactly what you need and you're gonna wind up having your edge on it anyway but uh, what it's got Scandinavian grind I don't know what the thickness on the steel is. But let me go grab the, if it's going to be a wood lower clone, let me go gra grab a real wood lower and put it beside it. How about that? A $500 knife against a $100 knife. Let's see what it looks like. Hold on a second. All right. Went and got it. Now, I'll show you the sheath of a $500 knife. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is. 
I got sewn down just one edge back here. It's a pretty sheath. Thickness. Let's compare the thickness of the sheaths and then we'll get to the knives. See the thickness? <laughs> no spot for a ferro rod on the one. No dangler on the one, which, you know, that's good and bad for some people. And dangler on this one is a pretty, pretty D ring. Um, back sides here. Now I'm not affiliated with William Collins whatsoever. Hopefully I can get down there one day and make him put me on some deer or something. Maybe I can pick him up some customers for that, but I'm not going to send you his way and it not be right, guys. I'm not going to do it. Y'all know I'm not going to do it. I'm going to beat the crap out of the knives, and if the knives don't hold up, I'm going to tell you. And if it pisses people off, it just pisses people off, period. So here we go. Alright, so we're going to see. Now, that is a wall hanger type knife. No, no, no leftover finish in the blade. You know what I mean? It, it just kept getting polished and kept getting polished until it was almost a mirror. They leave a little bit of a satin finish on it. With his, you can see it's got less of a finish on the blade, and you can tell where it was hand sharpened by him. And he didn't ever make it to no 8,000 grit stone on it. Didn't have to. Look at that hair. Hair just peeling off of there. Man knows how to put an edge on now. I'll give it to him. This is uh, resin wood in the handle. Browns and greens in that handle. Boy, it's pretty. And I would ask this man to make me my custom knife the way that I want one. And I didn't send him an exact design. Actually, I called him and talked to him on the phone about what I wanted because his knife handle design and the way they hold up is what I want and I knew in all honesty that I could kind of catch it before he blows out and start selling his knives for three or four hundred dollars which he could easily do with taking a little more time on them as far as polishing them on out but he don't want to do that because he wants to have a common man priced knife that's going to perform for a lifetime and I, I see where he's coming from there he don't want to have one of those knives where he's going to have you know four years of backup and he can't do nothing for anybody he wants a lot to get his knives in people's hands and get them out in the field working so uh, William Collins y'all need to go check him out also diving sparrow knives you need to go check those out and then we're going to come to the last one. This is somebody I ran into on YouTube here. Mr. Sandy. Jack Lure Knives. Watched Mr. Sandy from when he first started in uh, OJC 